Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we love to watercolor. We do a different project every single week, which sounds like a lot, but we break it down step by step. So even if you are brand new to painting and this is your first time painting ever, you can still do this. So our project today is the Robin Eggs. Ooh, ah. Michael ooh and ah at the beauty of it. Ooh. Thank you. Ah. Okay. So with this project, we are going to do this in four colors. So our very first color is lemon yellow. Our second color is tangerine. Our third color is azure blue. And our very last color is black. We are using two paint brushes today, a round six and a round two. These are our go-to brushes. They're great. I love them. If you paint with us, you'll see I use them in just about every single project. And this project has, I forgot how many steps. Let me look. I think it's five. At least two. At least two steps. Okay. So we have five steps for this project. So the very first step, we are going to just lay down the eggs, just a placement of them. We're not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, the second step, we are going to do the nest bottom. The third step, we are going to do the nest surrounding it and the nest texture. Um, step four, we're going to go back into the eggs and finish those off. And then the very last step, details. Just taking that last minute and making sure everything is a-okay. All right. Did you take this source picture from the picture of the eggs I took in California? I think I used that as a reference. I'll have to post that. So my beautiful husband, Michael, who is also a photographer in his spare time, um, takes great pictures. And you might see some of them creep into some of our projects as reference photos. So I'll have to share that egg picture he took from our backyard. Y'all can buy me a car when you're famous. <laughs> OK. OK, so there is no outline for this project. We are just going in this free hand, which might sound scary to you, but we're basically just making ovals. And also, eggs are kind of funny shaped, and so are nests. So don't be afraid if like, they're not perfectly circle or perfectly oval, because they're different every time. And that's the beautiful thing about nature. So don't let that stress you out. So for our eggs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of blue, just like a tiny bit, pull it to the center of my palette and add some water. So it's just like the lightest blue that you can possibly get. Because this is just for placement. So we're basically going to block out our eggs and then we'll paint the nest around them and then we paint the eggs. So go towards the center of your paper and just start putting in your eggs. Now, we can always kind of change the shape of them. So if you want to do them a little bit bigger, feel free to. I also am leaving like the middle of them white. I'm kind of just doing the outline of them a little bit because eggs usually have like a glare to them or at least like a highlight on them because they have form. So this is just like marking where we're going to put them and we'll paint around them. And remember, these are your paintings. So if you want to do three eggs or however many eggs, it's your painting. Totally your choice. OK. That's step one. <laughs> we did it. Good job, you guys. Now we're going to move to step two. We're going to do the bottom part of our nest. So if you look here, so this is a great lesson in depth. So we're doing the bottom part of the nest, and then we will go ahead and do kind of like the outside texture. Now, right underneath the eggs is where it's going to be darkest, because the eggs themselves are something that is casting a shadow on what's under, because they're on top. So it's going to be darker right underneath those eggs. And so the lip of the nest, so like here's kind of more the lip, it's going to be a lighter value than the bottom of it because it's closer to us. So, we're, but we're going to start by putting in the bottom part or like, yeah, the bottom part of the nest. So take a little bit of black and a little bit of tangerine. 
and I want you to get like a really, really dark brown. And if you guys don't know, dark brown, or brown is just orange with black, it's just dark orange. So you're gonna wanna mix orange and black together, or you can mix orange and blue. Big truck outside. That is a big truck outside. And the reason why you can mix orange and blue is because those are complementary colors, and usually when you mix complementary colors, they turn like a muddy brown color anyway, so another option. So I'm gonna take in, using my dark colors, I'm gonna go around the eggs first. Like so. It's the trash being emptied. Sorry, <laughs> trash being emptied in the back. <laughs> Is it super loud over or just a little bit? Okay, well then I'm gonna keep on going. So once I kinda outline my eggs, I'm then, I'm then going to make a circle from there. <laughs> They're angry at that dumpster. That's what it sounds like. So I'm going to kind of like surround this. Into a circle. Now remember, it does not have to be a perfect circle. Nests are not perfectly round. So you don't stress if this is not a perfect circle. And if you need to do a couple of layers to get this nice and dark, that is not a problem. Sometimes watercolor is really transparent, so it's hard to get super dark values. So what I like to do is I'll do a layer and then let it dry and then do another layer and work up from there. So. Don't stress about that. If you're trying to get it darker and it's just not darkening, wait for it to dry and then do a dark layer on top of it. Okay, that's step two. Good job, now we're moving on to step three. We're gonna do our nest textures now. So here's where it gets a little bit funny because I guess it's the same thing as when we talk about hair and when we talk about leaves and when we talk about all of these things is when we see a nest, our brain is telling us to like just do this Because in our head, that's what a nest is, is it's just a bunch of things wrapped up. But what it actually is, is they're layered on top of each other. So it's really important that you have a value change within these different lines and textures to communicate space and to communicate depth. So what we're going to do is, even though our brain is gonna want us to do a bunch of like squiggly lines, we're gonna do something similar to that, but you have to make sure you do it in different values. So I'm gonna switch to my round two. I'm gonna keep using this dark brown mixture that I have, and I'm gonna start doing these kind of like curved lines that go around the nest, and they're gonna to start to overlap. And it's okay, some can get nice and thick, some can be thinner. Still going at that trash can. <laughs> They're still getting that trash can. You know what? Good for them. They're doing a great job. So I'm just kind of doing overlapping circular lines around this nest. Now this is where, if you look at our nest, you see them right here. These are these chunky dark areas right here. And basically, those are like the holes that you're seeing into it. So like the top layer of the nest, the one that's closest to you, that's gonna be this lighter value here, this like light brown. And then the dark is where it's like holes where there's chunks missing right there. So I like to put in my dark value first, and then we'll put in some medium values. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this light brown, maybe mix in a little bit of yellow in there if you want a little bit more color, some orange. And then you're gonna go through and start putting in this kind of color throughout. Now remember to leave some white space for highlights. And it's okay, they're gonna overlap. I don't want you to like try and color in perfectly in between these dark lines. Let it overlap, let it get a little bit messy. 
while also leaving a little bit of white spaces. And yes, when you like start blending these together, they will kind of start to bleed. That's okay, we're okay with that. This is more of a loose style, so it's not a huge deal. And the next thing that we're going to do to kind of help us, because we're looking at this, we're like, okay, this is kind of a squiggly mess. So we're gonna put in a little bit of branches and textures in this nest to give us a little bit of reference to what is this going on here. So you can take that same light brown, and I want you to use your round two, and you can just go off from here and just do little branches that poke out. And you can go as detailed as you want. I'm just gonna go, kind of go along the edge and let them overlap because if you look at nests, it's a lot of overlapping stuff, a lot of different things going on in there. So it's okay if they kind of run into each other. It's not gonna be super pretty or perfect. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then I want a little bit of a lighter value in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and mix it to my brown that I have going on and just do some like yellow hints of color. And again, it's kind of like alternating circles and we do want to leave some white spaces in there. Don't cover up all of the white around the nest. Now you can make your nest as big as you want. If you want it bigger than this, you are welcome to. Really play with the shapes and what's going on there and don't be afraid to make it your own. Um, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna darken some of my areas again. Some of them kinda dried a little bit lighter than I wanted to, not a problem. Just go back in with another layer once they're dry and really darken some of these areas. So growing up, my mom like loved to feed the robins, the little birds in my house. Mm -hmm. And we also had a golden retriever and there were so many birds, I think she thought she was a bird. Lady did? Yeah, anyways, these robins would like land on her all the time and pluck her hair out. And she loved it because she thought that was her family. <laughs> but all the nests around our house were just made of golden retriever hair. Really? Yeah, it was cute. I really should have looked up all the different things they used to make nests. It's whatever. It's just whatever's around. Yeah. That's why I don't like, even if you get like strands of like blue in here or something, like there might be a string that you they could, picked up. You uh, could Google landfill nests and they just, they really make it out of whatever they can get. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit more tangerine cause I want a little bit more orange to show through. Then there's a lot of yellow going on, which is great, but I just want some hints of orange. So I guess the biggest thing to remember when you're doing this is try, 
try to think of it as in we want some really dark values, we want some medium values, and we want some light values. And if you have all three of those values, then that is going to communicate that it's three-dimensional. If you do it all in the same value, it's going to appear really flat on your painting. So make sure you switch it up in between. So my nest looks good. We can always go back to it once it dries if we need to adjust it anymore. And we are going to go back to step four. We're going to put in our eggs. So we left the space there for our eggs, um, but robin eggs um, have like, sometimes they're speckled, aren't they? Little robin eggs have little, so we gotta put some more color in there. So I'm gonna grab some blue. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow brown mixture because robin eggs are like light blue, but they also have like a greenish tint to them a little bit. And then I want to mix a little bit of brown in there to desaturate the color. So they're not like bright blue, they're like a little bit more true to what you would see. And then I'm just going to go in and fill in the eggs that I kind of have like sectioned off. So, and this is also, you can make your eggs smaller. If you've painted this and you're like, man, this looks great, but my eggs look super large for this. You can make your eggs smaller by painting in around like where you outlined it, just bring that outline in more. I'm gonna paint my eggs first and then just see if I feel like making them smaller. So I'm gonna use this green blue mixture that I have going on here. Now again, I'm not filling in the entire thing. I'm leaving the top white and then I'm gonna take a damp brush and just do one swoop over it so there's still a highlight. And then along the side of the egg is gonna be a shadow because the egg is three-dimensional, so it's round. So when it goes under, away from us, that is where you're gonna see some shadow along the edges because it's turning away from the light. So already that egg has more dimension to it than anything that's like totally flat. And then if you feel up to it, you can drop in a little bit of like, while it's wet, drop in a little bit of brown to give it kind of like a speckled look. Totally up to you. It's your egg though, so you do what feels right. And you're just gonna repeat that process for all of the eggs that you have. So I first take that green, I outline it, and then rinse my brush and do one swoop over the top so it has a highlight. And then I add a little bit of brown to my green mixture to put in a darker value along the side. And then while it's still wet, you're gonna do your speckled. Now the reason why we wanna do it while it's wet is because those dots will diffuse because it's wet, so they're gonna bleed out a little bit. And that's kind of what we want. If you want them to be sharp though, um, then wait for your egg to dry and then put in your speckles and they'll just be dots. So it just depends on what you want. I like the diffused look because um, if you look at speckled eggs, a lot of the times they are diffused. So do what works for you. Again, this is your painting, it's your life. Okay, next egg. And if you work quickly, you might be able to get, see if I can get them all done at the same time. So there's my outline. One little swoosh. Put in the shadow. And then while it's still wet, you're gonna put in that brown little speckled. Okay. Actually, let's give this one a little bit more color. And let's say you do this and you're like, man, those eggs just aren't popping like I want them to. I want them to be a brighter blue. You can do another wash of blue right on top. And that will just add a little bit of 
color, a little pop of color. There we go. Okay, that was step four. Now we're gonna do the very last step which is those finishing detail steps. So one thing that we have to do is get rid of this blaring white center that we have going on in between our eggs. And then we can play with the nest a little bit more if we want to. So I'm going to take more of my blacks and mix it in with my orange. And I'm just gonna go in now, you might get a little bit of bleeding. If you don't want that to happen, just wait for your eggs to dry. I don't mind if they bleed a little bit because what I can do is just pick up my paper towel and get rid of the excess color. And I feel like it actually kind of adds to like that natural look of eggs where there's different color variations going on. So I don't stress about something like that too much, but if you're really afraid of that dark color getting into your eggs, just wait for your eggs to totally dry and then that won't happen. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make this robin egg a little bit smaller. If you look at my other ones, this one looks like way huge, which isn't a big problem because I'm sure there's variation in size of eggs, but I just want it to like, I just want it to fit in a little bit more. Here's Sarah implying her unrealistic egg beauty standard. <laughs> Listen, all eggs are beautiful. I just wanted that one to be a smidge smaller. I'm just kind of rounding out, blending out some of these edges. And it's okay if right around the eggs, it's a little bit darker in value because that would be a little bit true to what we would see because the eggs themselves are casting shadows. So it's okay if it's a little bit dark, like right around the eggs. You don't wanna do, a, you don't wanna do an exact outline around the eggs because they wouldn't be outlined. However, there would be more shadow within these two eggs than on the rim. Does that make sense? So like in between here, there's gonna be a little bit more of a shadow compared to what's out there because the eggs themselves are casting shadows. And then what you can do is you can blend it out to the edge. And then this is where you're gonna take a second and be like, okay, what else can I do to help this or what other things should I be looking for? So for me, I wanna put in a little bit more dark around um, the rim of my nest, put some of those low values back in or dark values because when you're doing a bunch of wet on wet with different values, sometimes they blend together and you lose that dark you're looking for. So you can just put those back in. Like so. And then what I want to do is I actually want to just let the edge blend a little bit more with a lighter value. So I'm just taking a damp brush and just kind of smearing this color around a little bit. to give kind of more of that like hazy feel where the edges, because there are so many layers, it's not a strict, rigid line. There's a lot of things kind of going on. So it kind of has a hazy edge. Is that a right word, hazy? Sure. Okay. Now I'm gonna go in and do one 
more layer around my eggs and clean those up a bit. And you can have your eggs closer if you want. I just keep on making mine smaller. But I feel like robin eggs are small. Aren't they small? I think I probably started out with them a little bit too big. Okay, last finishing touch, last step. I'm gonna just, I feel like I need to put in a couple more edge branches poking out. And you can even have some like go totally like, whoa, out there. Because why not? And remember to try and keep this random when we're when we're not used to painting and we're doing textural lines or detail lines, we have a tendency to keep them all the same length and kind of like have a pattern to them so it's like evenly spaced. But, and I understand that that's what our brain is telling us to do, but try and fight that because a lot of what we see in nature is very random. So it's a little bit more like, here's this really long guy sticking out there and that's okay. So, and if you try and make them too evenly spaced and all the same size, then it's actually going to um, flatten your image a little bit. I don't know why it is that way, but that's what I've noticed. Okay, yeah. That looks great. Okay, that's it. Good job. You're smiling over there, is everything okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, if you guys painted this with us, please share it, I would love to see it. You can post it on Instagram, um, let's go make art is our Instagram name, so that's how you would tag us, or hashtag Let's Make Art. If you're on Facebook, you can share it on there. Uh, we have a wonderful Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Sorry, we changed the name, I had to think about it for a second. Let's Make Art Watercolor. And there you can share your paintings. And it's really great, because people are supportive, and it doesn't matter if you're a true beginner or if you've been painting for 10 years, we just really like watercolor. We wanna see what you make. So um, share it, tag it, Thank you for painting with us. And uh, if you need any of these paintbrushes or supplies, or if you want a kit to paint this, you can just go on letsmakeart.com, get all those supplies. We tell you everything that we use and you can even order from us. So uh, I think that's it. Bye you guys. Bye.